Harry Anderson is the star of Dave's World every Friday here on CBS, and sometime around Easter you'll see him in a brand new television version of the classic play Harvey. It's always a joy, Harry. Thanks for coming on, and welcome to CBS Late Night. Thanks, Harry. And they haven't scheduled Harvey yet. We talked no. about that the last time. Easter, they're saying now. Oh, Cause good. Because there's a rabbit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so don't tell them. Don't, whatever you do, don't tell them you there's know, not when, really a rabbit. When, when Moonvest was here the other night, our programmer, I says, by the way, Les, you know, when are we going to run that thing? And I, 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 it never occurred to me. Oh, you didn't ask him. I, 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 I should have I called You should have called in. Pretended yeah. to be from Modesto. And, I don't know and if we've him. talked about this in the past, but you've been commuting between Los Angeles and Seattle for 14 years and more. Oh, and, no, and, well, seven years. Seven oh, years okay. of travel. Yeah. And that you would sometimes spend uh, days on end at a very nice uh, motel, hotel in the San Fernando Valley and right. do your work and then go back to Seattle. You and your family finally have found a place to settle in here in Southern California. Yes, we you did. You finally bought a place in <laughs> Southern California. <laughs> we got a place in Pasadena, beautiful old green and green. Now tell the folks what green and green means. Green and green were the architects who really um, uh, defined the craftsmen, the arts and crafts um, uh, style of, of home. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, their most famous home is a Gamble House in Pasadena. This is not far from that, and it uh, was built in 1907, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it fun? It's fabulous. It, yeah, it's fun. I recently bought a 100-year-old Victorian house up in Northern California that I'm playing with now. You know, take a lot of nurturing. Yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. And not only nurturing, cash. Yeah. <laughs> cash is a welcome commodity. So now your family, you'll be able to spend more time with your family. Yes, I will. Or, so, or somebody's family. There's yeah. room for another family if, they, if mine can't make it. And the last time we talked about your concerns for your family, especially your daughter, who's 16, 17 right. years old. Huh? Right. Yeah, now she's, see, she's down here this week looking at USC and CalArts, and, and uh, now that she's ready to leave school and uh, high school and, and go to college, this is, this, uh, L.A. has a whole new meaning to her now, you know. There's great opportunities I was her. watching uh, one of the tabloid pro news programs the other day, and they did a piece on how p uh, parents who were wild in the 60s uh, are now carefully watching their teenagers. Yeah. to make certain they don't go down the same path. Yeah, and to see if there's the genetic damage we were <laughs> promised <laughs> would happen. <laughs> so, I'm just wondering. See if that, those third and fourth eyes start sprouting. If you keep pretty close tabs on your teenage. Oh, I, you know, my, my girl is, is, is very bright and very self-controlled, and she gets that from her mom. Uh, certainly not from me. Uh, she's, I, I, don't have, I don't have great concerns about my kids. I have... Um, I think the, the, where the concern comes is you want to be honest with your kids. But at the same time, when I was 16, the world was a different place, and we thought a lot of stuff was harmless and fun, and we knew we were going to do better than our parents, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and sex was just a, 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 you know, a good time, and, and, and drugs were harmless. And, of course, we learned a lot in the, in the 30 years of And have you, have you had talks with your, your, your daughter about this? Like, yeah, we've from had. From what you've learned, the experiences that you had? Well, I, we, we've had some talks. I mean, I think, I, think you, you, um, I think your kids learn by watching more than by listening. You know? I think they, they, they get a picture of who you are by seeing you in your natural environment rather than when you sit down and say, now let me tell you who I am. Right, you know? right. You uh, spent a lot of time doing street performing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the great performance uh, uh, through the centuries has come from people who did things on the street. Sure. And sure. what do you learn from that? What do you learn on the street as a performer? As that, a performer. That, that, that helps you later on now in this life that you lead as a, as a sometimes a producer, sometimes an actor, yeah. uh, appearing in uh, teleplays and motion pictures. Well, you know, I, I'll tell you, I, um, there have been a lot of very talented people that I have observed. And it... it the, when the thought has occurred to me, you know, put that fella on a street corner or put that lady on a street corner for 20 minutes and they'll, they'll find that missing piece, mm -hmm. that, that thing that seems to be missing. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, I, I, was a, I was an adult before I started performing for people who would actually come to see me. Uh, as a youth, I was always performing for people who were headed somewhere else. Yeah, on the way past. I had to get their attention, and I had to hold their attention. And what, what, what did you do? Your shtick was? Well, uh, my, my magic. Magic, I mean, yeah. You're doing yeah. magic or hustling with a shell game. But, yeah. but for, the, for, the, for the lion's share of the time, it was magic. And I had to grab their attention, and I couldn't let go. I couldn't slack off. I couldn't, um, I couldn't lose them, or I lost my, I lost my nut. So... Um, a trick that I developed over the years, I'd, I'd get a little crowd going, and then I'd get somebody to loan me a $5 bill or a $20 bill. Then I would go through a long permutation of effects. At the finish, 10 minutes later, I would reproduce the, the, the $20 bill, yeah. 
and have, reproduce it just right over my hat. So the fellow had the opportunity to drop it in. Um, <laughs> people would stick around to see if that money was ever going to reappear. So I, I, um, I learned a lot. And, and, and sometimes I, I wonder um, exactly what it was I learned. But I know that I wouldn't have traded those years for anything. They were fabulous. I remember as a kid, my mom took me one time to the Midway at a county fair in northern Wisconsin. And there was a guy there doing that. And does anybody have a $5 bill I could borrow for just a second? Yeah, just for a second. Just yeah. for a second, you know. And, uh, you know, in northern Wisconsin at the county fair in the 40s, five bucks was a lot of money. Sure, And sure. Uh, like you say, the $5 would disappear for it about 10 people's 50. attention. Oh, you don't leave till you yeah. see the, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And same thing, right over the hat, just in case. And, you know, when I was on the street uh, in San Francisco, and I played the cannery, you know, the cannery down at the sure. wharf, Robin Williams was down there, Bobby Shields was doing... Mime and Union Square. And what did Williams do? Williams did street mime. He did, he did all sorts of crazy stuff. He did Shakespeare. He did um, um, human Picassos. He did, he, he, did, he did Robin Williams. Do you know, when I walked the streets of New York, when I lived there years ago, there was always street theater on the streets of yeah. New York. There were people who would play the drums, for example, on manhole covers. And uh -huh. there, there were uh, people with, with uh, violins and people with guitars and people with keyboards uh, playing at the little squares and parks in New York. And yeah. you'd always stop. And it's you know. changed now, though, because really? the I think the, the street, the urban street is a sadder place now. Yeah. I mean, I was lucky to get there when I did. Uh, and 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 it was there was a lot of positive life, and now there's, you know, my my son, it wants to see the opening of um, Empire Strikes Back in the oh, morning, sure, and sure. he said, he said, do you think there are going to be people sleeping uh, all night uh, to 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 get in line? I said, there are always people sleeping on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. You, you can bet that there will be. <laughs> but, uh, but when I was when I was a kid, it was a it was. That hadn't evolved so fully. Um, uh, uh, it, it was a different atmosphere, I think. You know, I was walking with the companion one night here, two nights before Christmas, just a couple months ago in Beverly Hills. And there was a man with a saxophone in a corner in Beverly Hills playing the Christmas song. Yeah. And you couldn't help but stop yeah. and drop a few bob in his basket. Yeah. You know, just a mournful saxophone in the night playing the Christmas song. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, street performance. I mean, and through the centuries it's been there. Uh -huh. Some of the great stuff has come off the street into, in, in, into theaters and into and, music halls. And as you say, I mean, it's, it's unexpected. Yeah. That song, if you, if you heard it uh, in a concert hall or if you heard it on the radio and you were expecting to hear it, would have a different, you'd have a different Absolutely. feeling about it than when you walk around a corner and there out of the blue is somebody expressing themselves. And I'll tell you, um, I've got, I guess, having worked the street and appreciating those who have the nerve to go out and do it, um, I, I, I will never, I cannot walk past a street performer. I can walk past somebody who's, who's trying to hit me up for spare change, but I can't walk past the guy. I don't care how badly he's yeah. playing or, you know, how much he should be doing something else. If he was willing to stick it out there. And, and put himself on the line. Oh, yeah. Really on the line. Yeah. We're chatting here with Harry Anderson, who's the star of Dave's World on CBS. The teleplay Harvey, the great Mary Chase play, we think is coming up at Easter time on CBS because of the bunny connection. The toll-free <laughs> is up and running at 800-952-2788. And we'll be right back after this break.